Hi, I'm Brody McLeod. I'm gonna make a quick video about some really fucked up stuff that happened. In 2019, I was sectioned under the Mental Health Act, following having a few visits from a bent copper who came around to my house for reasons that no one really understood, and then hearing somebody screaming in agony outside my house. At the time, I thought it was my little brother. Here's a quick clip of that. So I'm just in Buckfast Lee and there's some fucking mental noise coming from over there. It's fucking horrible. Sounds like a dog or something. Is it still there? It's absolutely fucking insane. I just had to come out and video it, but you can't hear it anymore. Fucking really, really creepy. Um, I really need to GP that day to get myself admitted to hospital because I'd not slept for a couple of days and I'd been really, really worried about this bent copper harassing me. That screaming had gone on for about five minutes and it stopped as soon as I went live on Facebook. Anyway, later that night I got in an ambulance and I was taken to Torbay Hospital and then on to a hospital in Darlington. So this is a patient transfer form. H3 and H4 they're called. Um, this shows that I was taken to Sydney Victoria House in Darlington and that was on the 17th of May. I got there at 2.30 in the morning. I was taken from that hospital to another private hospital in Taunton, Somerset, also run by the Signet Group. Um, you can see here this is another patient transfer form. This is from the 21st of June. I was taken there from Darlington down to Taunton and then is another H4 patient transfer form. I was taken there from Taunton to Devon Partnership NHS Trust's Hay Tour unit at Torbay Hospital in Devon. I was on the 16th of August. So when I got to Hay Tour Ward, I had my first ward round a couple of days after I arrived. The ward round is a meeting uh, with an MDT team, which is a multidisciplinary team. And what they do is they discuss uh, your care plan and the way you're going to be treated. You've got something called a responsible clinician. And then there's a few other guys that help to practice medicine in there. When I got into that meeting, uh, I asked everybody in the room to introduce themselves and try to write down their names. There was a chap called Walter. There was a doctor called Priya Akula. There was a guy called Keith. Um, I asked the guy called Keith who he was. And he wouldn't tell me his second name. He just had a name badge on called Keith. He wouldn't tell me why he was there and he wouldn't tell me what his job title was. He said, I just work here. I was a bit spun out by that and um, eventually he just agreed to leave the room rather than give me his full details, which I thought was a little bit strange. The next day that guy left. So he was just sat in my ward round meeting discussing my sensitive medical information. Nobody knew who he was. He just had a name badge on that just said Keith um, on his top. And when I questioned him, he left. When I asked for my GP's details, sorry, my responsible clinician's details, after being a little bit confused about what this guy'd done, she also refused to give me her general medical council number. Now, if you haven't heard of uh, the general Med general medical council, what it is, is it's um, basically a group which regulates uh, qualified medical staff so that you can make sure that their details are verified and that they've got qualification if they can be dealing with stuff that's going to affect your life. I asked her for her GMC registration details and she said that I had to apply for that in writing. Now, this is extremely unusual. Um, I didn't really know what the deal was with that. And then after I did apply for them in writing, they still weren't provided by the hospital. And then she went on leave for two weeks. When eventually I did research it, what I found was that actually, surprisingly enough, when I did check with the General Medical Council, she wasn't on the specialist register. Now, if you want to be a consultant for NHS England, you must be on the specialist register. Um, you, there is no two ways about it. And it was just very, very funny that, first of all, I asked her for her details and she wouldn't provide them, which anybody with a, with a medical qualification, anyone who knows anyone with a medical qualification will tell you that the GMC will always... You have to give your GMC number. Um, it's a bit like driving a car without a driving license. You just can't not produce it. You have to be able to produce it. And in fact, it's not like a driving license because you have to be able to produce it immediately. And there's no reason why anybody should ever withhold that information. Then what happened after that was that she went on leave for two weeks and I didn't have a ward round while she was away. Following the period of leave when she returned... I, did, I tried to question with the hospital why it was that she didn't have uh, the GMC details and why it was that she wasn't on the specialist register and nobody gave me any details of that at all. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of quick chats with uh, the General Medical Council, who I spoke to on Twitter. 
So I tweeted this today to the General Medical Council. I forwarded my tweet and asked, hello, could you tell me if this person's a qualified doctor, please? Got a reply today. It said, hi Brody, sorry to hear you're in hospital. Please be assured that your doctor is fully registered with a license to practice medicine in the UK. Some doctors can work as consultants in the NHS without being on our specialist register, so it's likely your doctor was subject to one of these exemptions. We hope this reassures you. Best wishes, GMC Communication Team at 10.06. I wrote back and I said, hello, thanks for getting back to me. When I initially asked for details of GMC registration, they were refused. Is this okay? When I raised this issue with staff, Dr. Akula immediately went on leave for two weeks. There's named photos of all staff in the main ward corridor, except for this doctor, who's nameless. When I tried to take a photo, I was quickly told to delete it by a manager. When my life is concerned, some doctors consulting me who are likely legally registered and qualified is not good enough, I'm afraid. I'm sure you understand the need for diligence in healthcare. Could you please confirm whether the exemption specifically entitled Priya Akula to practice medicine as a consultant psychiatrist within the NHS in the UK? Just got a reply back. It said, Hi Brody, we can't complete registration checks on specific doctors in writing, but you can call us if you'd like to discuss your doctor's registration status. A doctor needs to hold specialist registration with us to work as an honorary substantiative or fixed-term consultant, but if they are working as a locum consultant within the NHS, which means they work temporarily in a given post to cover holiday or vacancy, etc., they don't need to be on the specialist register. You might want to get a clarification on the doctor's job title from the hospital. If your doctor is working as an honorary substantive or fixed-term consultant, we might need to look into this further, so please let us know if this is the case. We have no jurisdiction over administrative staff in the trust, so we cannot say whether or not they should have given you the doctor's information. But doctors are obliged to give you their registered name and or GMC number when asked. Hope this helps. Best wishes. I wrote back just now and said, hello, thanks for your reply. Doctors are obliged to give GMC details and this doctor explicitly refused despite several requests. What should I do about this? Her refusal was supported by staff on the ward, who, as mentioned, also told me to erase her identification image posted without a name in the corridor. Later this day, I wrote to acting ward manager Sarah Fenning to request them, details below. However, I was never provided them by NHS Devon Partnership Trust staff at Torbay Hospital and found them some days later on your site. As you can see from the photos, the doctor is also alternating between her middle name and first name on my documents. Is this allowed? It seems very much like she's trying to obfuscate her details, and so are the staff. This leads to me to believe she's not working as a locum, but illegally. I've been told she's the only consultant psychiatrist on the ward and a permanent member of staff. She's also made mistakes on my, my medical records, which could endanger my life. The inpatient admission she's been administering is, by hospital's admission, unlawful. I feel this is of great significance. Full details of this are here. I'm shocked you cannot confirm in writing a doctor's qualified status, but look forward to your reply regarding the above points. Thanks. So stuff got a lot more complicated at Haytor Ward after that. I did get back to the GMC and I did write that letter to the ward manager and ended up being the victim of some quite serious censorship. Find out what happened, check out part two. So yeah, this doctor had a picture on the wall but it didn't have a name next to it. When I tried to take a picture, the staff asked me to delete the picture straight away. When I checked with the GMC, she didn't have the GMC registration that she was supposed to have. And when I asked her for a GMC number, she wouldn't have it. I thought I did delete the picture, but it turns out I had it in a folder, which was for my Hewlett Packard printer. I did try and delete it in good faith. When I left the hospital, I found out I've still got it. Anyway, if you want to see what happened with the dodgy doctor, the rest of my stay at Hayes Hall, uh, and what I did about it, check out the part two of the video, which I'm just going to make now. Sweet, thanks.